And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical weather bulletin for June 25th. Tropical Depression 3E formed in the Eastern Pacific earlier today and the remnants of Dolly continue on towards Newfoundland. 30 storms have formed so far in the year 2020 so far, it's day 177. In the Atlantic, day 25 of hurricane season, the remnants of Dolly heading towards Newfoundland as I mentioned. Um, Elsewhere, nothing expected in the Atlantic anytime soon but there are rumblings in the long term model runs. In the Eastern Pacific, chances are going down for all of those other areas of interest. 20%, 40%, 50%, and 10 going west to east there, along with Tropical Depression 3E. It's a right mess over there in the Eastern Pacific. In the west, though, it's extremely quiet and looks like it will remain quiet for the foreseeable future. Models not expecting anything to form at least in the next five days and probably longer. In the Southern Hemisphere, we're watching again Invest 90S, which we're now giving a 30% chance of development and 20% chance for the area of interest off Indonesia. So, Tropical Depression 3E has a winds of 35 miles per hour and a pressure of 1,006 millibars. Its current location is out in the Eastern Pacific, far away from any land at the moment. It's expected to become a tropical storm soon in the next 12 to 24 hours and will remain so for a short period we're expecting before a weakening and then uh, becoming a remnant low as it sinks back towards the south again um, as it fades off towards the west, crosses the uh, central Pacific boundary and continues on. North Atlantic looks like this right now, fairly quiet picture, Uh, Saharan dust is the dominant feature in the tropical zones, um, extending all the way from Africa to the uh, Gulf of Mexico by this point actually, with a few tropical disturbances uh, located further south. The Gulf of Mexico, you can see there some thunderstorm activity along the Mexican and Texas coastline. The Eastern Pacific, as you can see, getting a little bit more interesting. Of course, the Tropical Depression 3E on the left-hand side is the most interesting feature out of all of them right now. Um, The one that National Hurricane Center was more keen about initially, there's now only a 20% chance by their numbers and ours. That's the one more visible on the left-hand side as well. The Western Pacific, very little going on. Um, You can see two little flare-ups there out in the open ocean and a few thunderstorms blowing up on the western part of the Philippines and also over southern China as well, which as you saw on tonight's weather beat is experiencing some flooding issues in the southwest. So that's continuing right now. The South Pacific looking fairly quiet, just that one major thunderstorm by the looks of things, um, just to the northwest of Samoa and in the Indian Ocean. We're again homing in on those two areas of interest and some deep convection blowing up out of both of them, um, but not too convincing on either of them at this moment in time, although 90S, that's something to watch further west. Sea surface temperatures um, around the same as what we've been always been looking at to be honest, 28 to 30 degrees Celsius in the eastern Pacific, Atlantic back to normal really, the Caribbean a little bit cooler there in the central and southern part, 27 to 28 degrees, but generally very warm around the lesser and greater Antilles. Um, looking towards the Indian Ocean, temperatures fairly warm again and really recovering now in the Bay of Bengal, back up above 30 degrees. The uh, South China Sea, very warm, 30 plus, and the Philippine Sea looking decent as well with 28 degrees waters extending way out towards the east. The anomalies, um, again you're seeing the La Nina feature and the Western Pacific above average for the most part, the Atlantic also um, eliminating slowly but surely its below average areas in the subtropics. This is the latest imagery on Tropical Depression 3E, um, partially exposed at this time and fighting a little bit with some of those other disturbances to its east. So the system itself not looking that bad, um, but it has become a little bit more exposed throughout the day today and uh, it'll want to try and get that convection back up above it very soon indeed, otherwise it may be in jeopardy of losing its current status and certainly of uh, getting to tropical storm state as you can see on these latest frames here how that convection has been displaced a little bit further towards the southwest um, and we'll have to wait and see what happens with that. It did look much better earlier in the day um, so we'll see what happens and whether nighttime brings 
any further flare-ups. National Hurricane Center are keen on making this a tropical storm, at least for a good two or three days as far as I recall. And this is the latest on uh, what some of the other models are saying. Yep, uh, the HMON calling for a 60 mile an hour peak there actually. HWRF wants a 45 mile an hour peak, National Hurricane Center going with 50. Wind shear they're saying is actually going to be quite low until um, the 48 hour mark, although that's only the HMON and the HWRF on the board there, so uh, they might be a little bit biased and maybe not seeing what we're seeing on the actual satellite imagery. But we'll wait and see how that goes. It will not be affecting any land. June 25th, 1960 had three systems active. An unnamed tropical storm had just made landfall in Texas, had weakened to a tropical depression by now. Tropical Storm Bonnie off the coast of Mexico in the Eastern Pacific and Typhoon Olive was peaking today as a Category 3 storm on our numbers, although the JTWC listed it as a 145 mile an hour Category 4 before it struck the Philippines later on June 25th. So that was another strong typhoon that was active on this day. So the next name on the Atlantic naming list is Edward, followed by Faye in the East Pacific. 3E might become Boris. The next name after that would be Christina. In the Central Pacific, the next name on list one, if 3E has any funny ideas and decides to form west of 140 degrees west, it would be called Hone. In the Western Pacific, the next name on list three is Sinlaku. In the North Indian Ocean, it's Gatti on list one. In the Southern Hemisphere, um, in the Australian region, the next name is Imogen, followed by Joshua. And in the Southwest Indian Ocean, Kundai is next on the list. In the South Pacific, Yolanda is next up if we get any activity there. That's all for now. We'll be back with another Tropical Weather Bulletin tomorrow. Check out our new look cyclone tracker on the Force 13 website for the latest up-to-date information. You can also find us, of course, on our YouTube channel, search Force 13, and also on Facebook and Twitter, Force 13 at Force 13 on Twitter for the latest updates. You can also help the project become even better by becoming an ultimate fan on YouTube. To see the full list of Ultimate Fan Benefits and to join, visit youtube.com forward slash force13 slash join. With a special thanks to our top supporters this month. You can also check out our growing merch store so you can show Force13's colours wherever you go. You can also find a link to our Discord server underneath this video in the description.